right, so you want to start your own little handyman or contracting business. So you want to quit your day job and you want to go into business for yourself. Well, let's uh, get into it. I'll give you my recommendations, the learn from my mistakes and what I would uh, do if I was in your shoes. Let's go. All right, guys. <clears throat> We'll get to the tools. I know everybody wants to see all the tools and everything you need to start a business, but if I'm being honest, <clears throat> when you're starting a business, it starts here. I'm in my basement. This is my office area for now, and I love it, but it starts here. Uh, you've got, you've, if you're starting a business, you've got to, I'd recommend doing it part-time at first. You know, you're gonna s be legal because nothing's gonna be, nothing's gonna cramp your career as a small business owner or self-employment than getting sued because you didn't do or something happened and it just ruins your life basically because you burnt a house down something bad happens and you didn't have liability insurance or you know you get in trouble with the state because you're not licensed all that good stuff so let's start with okay you decided you wanted to you know make a go be uh you know a small business owner handyman contractor um so it basically starts here so we're going to start here uh, have some place that you can manage a business. And I, what that means is you're probably quitting a 40 to 80 hour uh, a week job to work more than that as a small business owner. Just letting you know, absolutely. Um, I'm up early doing stuff and I'm home late after um, the daughter goes to sleep. I have to um, do work. I have to, you know, QuickBooks, um, you know, return phone calls, estimates, all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't, doesn't just end when, you know, the sun goes down all that kind of stuff. So there's been multiple, multiple late nights and just keep that in mind. It's, it's, it doesn't end. It, it's always, there's always something to do. So let's start out first. Uh, if you want to start a business, the first thing I would do is get legal. So find yourself a name. Um, you know, whatever it is, Joe Schmo handyman, you know, Nate's contracting service. And I'm going to do this cause I'm in Michigan. It's going to be, I'm going to base it in Michigan, but look at your state in Michigan. It's the articles of incorporation. I'll link it in the description below. You're going to have to basically print that sheet out, file it. Uh, I think it costs $50 and, um, you're going to, you know, write down the name of the business you want and you, your name, your, I think your social address stuff like that you know basic information and you'll submit it and i think it it took about two weeks or two and a half weeks you'll get a letter back saying hey congratulate you know here's your business name it's you know uh, my name is richard so richard's llc contract you know richard's contracting llc it's actually peak contracting but um and then it'll have you know your address and everything down fantastic you can use that paperwork and i think um I'll link in the description. You basically go to like um, EIN.gov or something like that. And then you can get yourself an employer ID, like a tax ID number for the IRS. So you can, you know, do taxes. You can be legal and you get your EIN. You can, you know, get, that's basically a social security number for a business basically. And you can, you charge customers and you'll get taxed on it, all that kind of stuff. So once you have your EIN, that's going to open the doors up to, I mean, I know, I mean, anybody, if you do anything with your business name, they're going to, they're going to want the EIN. That's basically how it goes. So if you're going to do anything with credit as a person, they're probably going to want your social security number, right? So you got your EIN, you got your, you got your business. The next thing I would do, absolutely tell everybody, you know, that you're in business, your aunts, uncles, moms, dads, sisters, brothers, everybody tell them you're in business for yourself. If they need any work, Go on Facebook. You already have a Facebook account, I'm assuming, because I think most of the world actually already has it, at least half of it probably. Um, go on Facebook, create a business uh, page for, with your new business name and EIN, and you know, put up pictures of yourself, whatever you've done in the past. If it's own, around your own house, take pictures of that, and then create a Facebook page. Next thing I would do after creating a Facebook page, create a Nextdoor, um, it's a Nextdoor app account, basically download that app create a next door app account because that's also free well it's you know it's, it's a way of getting in you know getting your face in front of people that you want to work with right so 
that's what I would do. Now, next thing, I messed this up. I would honestly uh, get a different Google phone number or get a different phone with a phone number. This is my personal phone. I have a business phone, a separate business phone uh, recently. So I'm still weeding out my old co uh, customers from using my personal phone. I would get a second phone number and put that on your website or your Facebook account. You, you know, that's what you advertise with is your business phone because it's cost me a lot of, you know, sleepless nights, not sleepless nights, but it just, it's very, it's hard to leave work at work or your job at the job site, all that kind of stuff. When you have people reaching out to you all the time when you're trying to enjoy your family, right? So I would highly, not necessary, but I'd highly recommend uh, getting a second phone number for your business. Uh, we've gone through, you know, basically now, after that, before you do any work, I would also get yourself some liability insurance. It's super cheap, shouldn't cost you much, get liability insurance, whatever is required by your state or province if you're in Canada, but get liability insurance as well. That's actually probably before you do anything else besides, you know, don't, don't do any work, don't work without being insured. I'm not saying don't work if you're not licensed, I'm just saying don't work if you're not insured, I wouldn't do it. If, you, if you're in a state or, pro, you know, if you're in some place that requires a license for what you do, you got to bite the bullet and get a license. That's that is in Michigan. You can do work up to six hundred dollars before you can. You need to be licensed, and um, work anything over a thousand dollars requires a contract. But it, that's up to you. But that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm dealing with here in Michigan. <sighs> what else we got here? So, going back to your socials, on all your social media, Instagram, create all those free accounts. You want to get your your work and your face, your business out there and just post on it multiple times a day, at least once a day, just, just put everything up, just vomit, just, you know, picture vomit, everything, just get everything out there. And, you know, on your personal Facebook, you can just, you know, promote yourself because you probably have a bunch of face, you know, Facebook friends and stuff and they get them to share it. And it, it's, it's an avalanche. Once people share it, it's, it'll work for you and you'll get, you're, you're going to get an initial volley of work from people who want to support you because they know you, um, you've got to do you know, good work, fantastic work. You, but that's going to dry out. And once that dries out, you've got to have enough, um, you know, content to proof of work that you can do stuff. So notice I haven't said anything about power tools. I haven't said anything about getting tools. We'll get to that. But that comes that comes later. Um, if you as long as you already I'm assuming you already have some sort of tools or an idea of what you want to do. So now the other thing I will say and this is probably going to be a long video anyway. Another thing I would say is don't be a jack of all trades. Don't do everything. Focus on maybe a few jobs if you can, um, or a handful of jobs, or you know types of work that you want to do, and focus on that. Because if you do everything, you're not going to be great at anything, and you can mess stuff up. And there's a big, you know, certain, certain things. There's steep learning curves. Like there's, it takes a while to be proficient at drywall and you know electrical. It just depends on the state. You know, you might not be able to do any of it. But you know you've got to you've got to be proficient enough to actually be able to charge for a service that you can actually do. Don't do don't charge and don't take on work you don't know how to do. Um, practice on your own house, practice on your own apartment, wherever it's at. Your family members, hey, I can put up some trim for you for free. Uh, you know, as long as I can take pictures of it and do the best work you can, and then learn. That's basically what you should do. Stay organized. Get a routine. So. If you're just starting out, keep those, those you know, save emails, contact information. If anybody contacts you, get their name, their phone number, their email. Just keep that in your library. Um, I would highly recommend you get some sort of estimating software. I use QuickBooks. It's okay. I, there's other stuff out there that's probably better. I'm sure it's better. Uh, so get some sort of software that's, uh, that's pretty cheap that you can estimate because you want to be professional and you want to send out a professional estimate and it helps. It absolutely helps. I would also recommend signing up with Square. I am not affiliated with Square whatsoever. I've been using it since I started, actually probably even before I started, when I was, uh, when I was basically using it as a side hustle because I wanted to charge people for, you know, for services that I can provide. And they do charge, I think it's like two and a half, three and a half percent or whatever, but the payments are there. I've never had a problem with it. I have gotten work because I accept credit cards. That's plain and simple. Customer said no, but I was like, no problem, you know. And then it came up somehow that I take credit cards, and they're like, oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, they're doing three or four times what you know they originally said no to because 
they can put it on a credit card and they can pay it off whenever they feel like it. Yeah, I get I get charged a certain fee, but that's already included in my estimates anyway. So I would highly recommend Square. There's other ones out there. I think um, Clover or something like, I forget what it is, but there's other th forms of pay PayPal, Venmo, um, Cash App, all that kind of stuff. You just make it easy for people to give you money, right? That's That's what I've got. Next would be, what we got? Oh, answer, uh, you've got two phones, obviously, so you've got your business phone and you've got your personal phone. Your business phone, you know, you, between business hours, try to have it on you at all times and answer the phone. Absolutely answer the phone if you can. Um, sometimes I stop work, if I'm painting, I'll stop and answer a phone because you'll be surprised with people. If you, they get you on the, if they're talking to you, that's a good percentage of the winning the job, winning the bid right there. They can talk to somebody, somebody answer the phone, um, and then you can talk to them and you can weed them out too. Be like if they're somebody just absolutely doesn't want to do the work for the price that you need to charge, hey, you you know right off the bat, answer your phone. If you can't answer it, absolutely call them back the same day they called you. Absolutely clear your voicemails, call them back the same day they called you because it matters. Time time is money with this kind of stuff. So all right, so now let's talk about tools. Uh, you, I'm assuming you already have a certain amount of tools <clears throat> because you're already thinking about this kind of work. I don't think many people who have absolutely no tools decide to be a contractor or a handyman like, oh, that's, this is, I'm just going to quit my day job and do that. If you do, I mean, more power to you, but at the same point, you've got to have some sort of basis to think you can do the work that you want to do, right? So as far as tools go, I'm going to show you guys everything about every tool that I use that I can get pretty much 80 to 85% of the work that I do throughout a year. I can get done with these tools. Now, there's a lot of tools here. Uh, you don't have to buy them all at once, but I'll go through and show you the ones that I do deem that are very, very important. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything at the same time. I will link some videos in the description of these, you know, my hand tool uh, loadouts, you know, veto bags, stuff like that. I'll link in the description with some affiliate links as well if you want to learn where, learn where to buy these on Amazon, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, uh, tools are should be bought as needed basis. I know everybody wants to go buy tools. If you're in this, you, you, you're addicted to tools just like I am. Uh, but buy them when you need them. Buy them if you have a deposit to pay that, that of a job that needs it to pay for it. Use that money. Um, I would highly recommend taking deposits. If it's allowed in your area, again, if it's allowed in your area, take your deposit and on a, I mean, I would say take as much as you can, which is, you know, half down, half at, you know, at the end is kind of, depending on the job, I usually do like a third, a third and a third, or, you know, half, um, you know, another third and then keep, you just keep going down until, you know, the last form of payment is pretty much nothing really. So, uh, but at the same time, tools, buy them as you need them, not when you want them. If you need a tool uh, because you have a job that can pay for it, that's the time to, to get the tool. Everybody says do, don't go into debt getting tools, but at the same time, especially with the, with the dollar, with the inflation as is now, with, this, uh, with what's going on right now, if you get zero interest loan on something, I mean, the money is going to be worth less you know, a year down the road than it is going to be now because of inflation, let alone. I mean, it's just facts. So if you can get 0% or very low interest rate, something, you know, it, that might be something that works out for you. Um, I obviously, I have a dump trailer that I financed because I didn't want to put down, nor did I have, you know, the five figures of that dump trailer costs. So that's, you know, using money in my favor. But again, I'm paying interest, but I can pay it, you know, pay it down, pay it off sooner and just pay less of that. But that's also an income producing asset tools are should be an income producing asset if you're only going to use a tool once twice three or four times look into renting it uh i, I mean i would love to have a skid steer i'd love to have a, a cat you know what i forget what it's you know or a kubota skid steer but at the same time i could rent one for you know far less and i don't use it every day and if i was using the tool every day then yes i would have it which i do the tools you see i need them on a daily weekly basis um multiple times a day some tools, not so much, like my tile saw. I don't do tile every day, every week, but it's, it's paid for itself. It's, it, it's a cobalt 10-inch tile saw that paid for itself on the first job I used that on like three or four years ago. So, I mean, it, it, tools are an income-producing asset. So we're going to get into some tools here. 
Again, this is basically how I would start a business if I was doing it again. And I can link in the description if I have enough space in the description of my, my story and where, where I came from. I got fired from uh, a, basically a cable uh, company and I, was, it was, I went into work thinking I was just picking up some materials and I didn't have a job when I left, right? So, but I did have side hustle. You can, I'll throw a picture up here. That's what my, my, you know, I had a van. It looked like this. I had side hustles. I was doing other work at the same time because. I was supplement my income and I knew I wanted to get into this business eventually down the road anyway so it just happened sooner than I myself or my wife wanted it to so anyway uh, let's go into uh, my garage and I'll show you the tools that basically you know I can pretty much do everything with and if you guys have some sort of uh, tool that I missed here put it in the description below if it's in indispensable to you but these are pretty pretty straightforward tools Feel free to check out, like, and subscribe. Check out my Patreon page. I'll link it in the description below if you guys want more business content like this. I do rants, raves, and uh, complaining about customers that I have, all that kind of stuff on there too. So let's get to it. Hey, all right. So this, these tools are basically what I think you should have if you're going to have a contracting business. Now, the bare minimums, the easy... Uh, low-hanging fruit tools and the tools that are cost a little more and then there's some tools that are basically businesses in themselves uh, you can basically build an entire contracting business off a certain tool depending on what you're going to do um, for i example for example power washing like a power washer a paint sprayer a tile like a, a rolling tile saw uh, you just, there's there's so many things you guys can do with those tools and they're niche um, you can be, just be a tile guy you can just be a power washing guy or you can be, you know, something like I am, which I have all these tools because sometimes I need to do all that kind of work. So let's get into it. It's right here. Our first like little line items here. <sighs> Paintbrush right there, a tray, a, a nine inch roller and a four foot uh, little pole extension. You can do your basic rooms with that, those tools, your eight, you know, your eight foot ceilings, all that kind of stuff. You can get a lot of work done with those small tools. Obviously, paint liners, naps, all that kind of stuff. Drywalling as well. Get yourself some knives. You don't see these. These aren't crazy expensive. These ones are from Home Depot and those. Um, tray, and you got your you got your little drywall T right there, a little square. You can and then a knife to cut the drywall. You can get a lot of work done. Absolutely, a lot of work done with the correct knives and drywall square, paintbrush roller and tray like that's there's a lot of work to be done i will say get yourself a circular saw doesn't have to be this one just get yourself a circular saw you can build an empire i know i say that before i'm not sure who said it first but you can build an empire with a circular saw and then you can build an empire with this circular saw it's my favorite one i have three rear handles this is my favorite and you, you notice it's not milwaukee it's not makita it's dewalt because it's fantastic Get yourself a cock gun, any kind, you know, non-drip preferably because you're going to find your space, you're going to find things, you're going to need cock, you need to fill cracks, all that kind of stuff. Simple work, takes some practice, but you can get to it. it. It can be done for sure. Next would be absolutely an impact and your hammer drill. It doesn't have to be these ones, but get yourself an impact and a hammer drill, quarter inch hex for the bits. Uh, get all the bits you, you, that you need for whatever work you're doing, but get yourself an impact and a hammer drill. If you have to choose between the two and you don't have enough money right away, get yourself a drill because you can use it um, to, as a screw gun. You can't use it as an impact, but you can use it as a screw gun. You can get some work done. But, but once you do get an impact, you're gonna, you, you won't use it, a drill, for what an impact can do because it's, the torque's not there. It's just so much easier. <sighs> Hand tools. I'm not going through all these. Uh, I'll link in the description. Uh, this bag, all the, the, everything I carry in it. But get yourself some hand tools, some testers, anything you need for whatever jobs you want to do. But just get what you need. And obviously drill bits, um, quarter inch hex bits, everything for your impact. You're going to need it because obviously you're going to need to loosen screws and uh, nuts and bolts and lag bolts, all that kind of stuff. <sighs> Sawzall, hacksaw, whatever you want to call it. Demo tools. Demoing is very it's 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 good money it can be easy it can be really hard um hammer right here just get yourself demoing tools just to knock stuff out because a lot of work is demo 
and it's messy, but it can also be very rewarding and very profitable. Next thing I'll go into, you got more drills right here, is get yourself some sort of, you can get a pneumatic package of nailers. Uh, I have a framing, 18 gauge and a 15 gauge. Those are my favorite, mo most highly used tools that I have for nailers anyway, because you can, again, put up a wall, put up anything, anything you need to fasten, trim moldings, interior doors with a 15 gauge. <sighs> I mean, it's almost limitless really for what you can do and they're so nice. I have the cordless because Again, I, I don't run corded tools, but you can find like these three guns in a pneumatic set with a little pancake compressor for less less money than I think the framing nailer or even the 18 gauge cost in the cordless version. So there's ways of doing it economic in a budget and that was highly recommended. Would absolutely recommend these two. I mean, you can do so much work with this right here, but we're gonna get into a little more once we get into the second tier. Again, Circular saw for cutting, you can with this with a square. You have a square over here somewhere. We have one right there, but there's another, obviously a square to make those 90 degree cuts. And we're gonna get into the second tier, which I think the second tier is. Um, higher grade tools, makes you more efficient, and we'll get there. All right, so what do we have here? Honestly, a miter saw or a chop saw should go with your in initial tools right here. It really should, but you can get you can get most cuts done, almost all cuts done, not as efficient as a miter saw, but you can get them done with the, uh, the circular saw. But a miter saw should be on your quick short list of buying. Uh, this is a Makita's 36 volt, 12 inch. This is my daily driver, it's fantastic. Yeah, it, once you get one, you're gonna, you're gonna love it. It's gonna, it's gonna make whatever production, whatever work you're gonna do, you're gonna enjoy it and you can say yes to more work. That's hands down. <sighs> Table saw. Job site or not, I'd highly recommend a table saw. They are expensive. Again, we're getting into a little more expensive tools here, but you can do a lot of work, get fine cuts with a table saw. And you know, it doesn't have to be cordless, but I would highly recommend a table saw after a miter saw. And again, it depends on your work, but there's a lot of a lot of jobs where I would have been literally royally screwed if I didn't have a table saw because and there's some trim jobs, some fascia jobs that. Honestly, you can't really do when, I mean, you can make, you can try and do straight cuts with a circular saw, but if you actually want them to be super accurate, table saw is going to be the efficient way to doing it. So yeah, for sure. Absolutely. A table saw. Now I'll also recommend, I mean, it goes without saying you're going to need to be able to clean up. So, you know, brooms, trash, you know, dust pans, trash bins. I have four here of these brute trash bins, but I think I have four on, I think I have eight of these because I use them so, so much. And something to keep your tools in order, I, I, whether it's a melt crate or whatever it is, get yourself some sort of way of keeping your tools organized in your vehicle. That's just a pack I was just sitting there because I brought it home to organize it a little bit. So after the table saw, you got your miter saw, you've got all the other heavy tools lines you can focus in. I do have a jigsaw here as well. Now, depending on what you do, it might be one of the things you want to pick up first, but a jigsaw will literally, if for some jobs, it makes it actually possible, like some of these tools. A, a jigsaw should be on your short list of buying as well. Uh, blower, not only, I use it for cleaning out tools, but at the same time, clean it up yourself. Uh, blow, and just, it's whatever you need a blower for, but I find so many good uses for it. Um, get yourself when they're super cheap and you get it in the same battery line as your other tools are anyway. So after the table saw, you depending on what kind of work you're gonna do, I would highly recommend a track saw. Now, can a track saw do what a table saw can? Yes and no. Uh, if you're trying to take off small amounts of a material, a table saw is the way to go. If you're trying to break down sheet goods, a track saw hands down is the best thing. I'll never live without a track saw again. It is a fantastic tool for making straight cuts, breaking down large pieces or even, you know, doors and you have to trim down a door or stuff like that. I absolutely say yes to work because I have a track saw. So it, you, the tracks come in uh, depending on what you're doing, but I have a uh, 55 inch and then 118 inch there. So keep that in mind. Now, depending on what you're doing, again, I would highly recommend you get yourself some six foot, eight foot levels. These are empires. All right, sorry about that, but yes, level. Absolutely get yourself a set of levels. I know these are empires, they're pretty economic. 
Uh, there are more expensive levels out there that probably work, but these ones work for me. Also, SDS drill. I know you're thinking, well, I got a hammer drill. I don't need an SDS drill. I thought about that. I thought of that too for years until I picked this baby up probably four years, five years ago. Yeah, four years probably. And it literally cha it changed everything that I knew about drilling. I, 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 it was just amazing. Cinder blocks, it's just it's fantastic. I just going lag bolts into, you know, anything that has to do with masonry or concrete, fantastic. Anchoring stuff to con basement floors, you name it, whatever you need to do in SDS, it just, it's, I, I'm actually at a loss for words. I love that tool. Absolutely love it. So from there, i also, I forget, uh, you're gonna need a vacuum. Um, get yourself some sort of shop vac, something you can bring inside, cleaning up after yourself with obviously trash cans and stuff being able to throw away things that you need to is super important to customers. Absolutely 150% super important. It might be even more important than actually doing the job because they want to keep their house and their property clean. I have another table, all right, another miter saw there as well. Tile saw, again, you can just basically, if you just pick a trade, like I said earlier in this video, if you're just picking a certain trade, you know, make, you can probably do tile, get yourself a tile saw, a couple of small tile saws, and they pay for themselves very, very quickly. Um, and then that will lead us into the last tier of tools. Now, last tier of tools being kind of specialty and also luxury to have if you have them, but you can also just build your entire contracting business off of these tools too. All right, I already kind of alluded to it in the, uh, in the pat in the earlier, but a power washer and a paint sprayer. Very, they're higher, higher ticket tools for sure, but you can literally just, uh, you can keep yourself busy year round with a paint sprayer. Depending on where you live, a power washer in my area, no, because obviously there's winter time, but absolutely there's so many uses for a power washer, let alone power washing people's um, houses, driveways, you know, you know, property, stuff like that. And I bought this because I bit a job thinking I was going to roll it and brush it, but it would have took this, this buying this tool, not only, uh, it cost me money obviously, but it saved me probably a week's worth of labor. So that's how, that's how I look at it. So a paint sprayer, some sort of contractor grade paint sprayer, not the ones you buy at the Home Depot or Lowe's, um, will pay for itself super fast as long as you price your work accordingly. A power washer will pay for itself as well depending on how you price your work. Not, not as fast as I say a paint spray because um, there's obviously if you're power washing huge, huge garages, stuff like that, you're gonna want something a little larger. This is the M, the MT or the MITM 4,000 PSI, four gallon per minute, belt driven Honda engine uh, power washer. It's been, it's fantastic. It's, I absolutely love this machine, but at the same time, there's ones that are larger out there that you can, you know, eight gallon per minute, um, just just basically hose down huge buildings. <laughs> so it depends on what you wanna do, the right tool for the right job, there's no substitute. So keep that in mind. But these two tools, yeah, they're, you're gonna be spending 2,000 or more dollars for the power washer. Let, look, this is the 395, there's other sprayers depending on what you want that are absolutely more expensive, but they pay for themselves. You, sometimes you actually have to have a sprayer to actually to get the job done. Uh, so that's basically what, I mean, it's fantastic. Now, honorable mention, not, not including would be some sort of workstation. I'll throw some pictures in if I can, but this is kind of like my original workstation, which is like a six foot pop-up table. And I graduated to Polk station right here. This is the latest one that I've built, but I have a couple of these and having a workstation really, really helps efficiency. So, <sighs> It's a little dark out, but I wanted to, I got some free time and I wanted to do this video. All right, so obviously there's some tools that I missed in there, but let me know in the description below. One thing I know I know <laughs> that I missed was the oscillating tool that'd be right up there with one of the first tools that I would buy. Absolutely a, um, it just a huge tool to have in your arsenal. They're super cheap. You can buy the ones that I use which is the DeWalt. I think I have the Atomic and the 20 volt max versions. I have a few of them, that's how important they are. And um, they, I, I think they're like a hundred bucks. So for a bare tool. So if you're already in the DeWalt line, I don't, that's, I mean, they're fantastic tools, but I think every major tool uh, line actually has their own version of it. So whatever, 
whatever tool battery line you have, go ahead and pick one up because that, that's absolutely one of the tools that I would recommend as well. Those are the tools. That's the tools that you need for the business. As far as starting it, you're going to need to be legal. You're going to need all, all the things, the liability insurance. Um, that's the way I would set it up and that's the way I would go. Uh, now, obviously, you'd want to do a website if you're big enough. Um, that's absolutely one of the, the great things. You know, pay for a website. I think it's like $20 for a domain. Um, you can build them yourself for uh, very cheap, but pay somebody to actually have a you know, quality website. I'm still shaking away at my uh, new website as well. It's a work in progress, but you also, you got your Facebook up, you got your Instagram, all that kind of stuff to drive people to your business. So I think that's all I got, guys. Like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. Check out the links in the description for everything you need. Um, you know, tools, prior videos, describing everything, Patreon account, everything like that. Appreciate it.